Hey everyone, welcome back to National Board of Conversations. On this episode, I get to speak with Craig King. He is among the few black male educators to achieve National Board certification and continues to recruit men of color into the teaching profession across the country with the Call Me Mr. program. He's super passionate about his home state of South Carolina. I hope you have as much fun as I did during this conversation. Here's my chat with Craig King. Hey, Craig, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you coming on the show. Eddie, thank you so much for having me. Excited to have a conversation with you about everything going on in my world. Yeah, man, it's been a while. We got together like my first like two weeks here at National Board, and then it hasn't been ever since, but I'm glad we got to reconnect. So Absolutely. if you could give a brief intro of yourself, what's your current role? Sure. Uh, so everybody, I'm Craig King. I'm Director of Teacher Leadership with Palmetto State Teachers Association. I'm also the site coordinator for the Call Me Mr. program at Columbia College here in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, love what I do, love working with teachers. I'm also a keynote speaker. I do that as well. I do a lot of work in my community um, with uh, around children with cancer. I'm a pediatric cancer survivor, so do a lot of work with, in that area as well. But absolutely love teaching, families full of teachers. Um, and so Eddie, you know, I can keep going. I'm a teacher by heart. So you, I don't know, I didn't know how much of an intro you wanted, but you're good, you're good. That's, that's pretty much about work, my work, work balance right there. All right. So we're going to get into the personal side of you. What are your three favorite foods? Oh man. So don't, is this a no judgment zone? No judgment, man. No, no judgment. Okay. All right. So f- favorite foods off the top. If you're from the South, this is a delicacy, boiled peanuts without a doubt. <laughs> and it has to be new crop. That is very important. Okay. New crop boiled peanuts makes a difference. Second, my dad, my late father, um, came up with this really good recipe for chicken wings that he passed down to my brothers. I can make them for you all day, but I just can't tell you what's in. What's in oh, it? Man. So don't ask. Eddie, don't even ask. So <laughs> all that's, right. That's I just want to try them. As long as I can yeah. try them. Oh, yeah. You, hey, I got you. <laughs> I got you. And third, um, one of our family, one of our close friends, uh, Lita, uh, Lindsay, she has a cupcake shop here in Columbia. She has two locations called Lita Streets, and her cupcakes are divine. Absolutely. Okay. Divine. And a little point of uh, personal pleasure, if you go to her Facebook page, the first video ever posted was me tasting her cupcakes at her store. Oh, so you stand. You legit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can tell you about all the flavors. I can recommend all that good stuff for you. Yeah. All right. So what are the last three songs on your musical playlist? Oh man, um, three. All right, so come home, uh, which is on um, Anderson Pack's uh, Ventura album, I believe, with Andre Three Thousand. Okay. Uh, Black superhero, um, Robert Glasper, and um, a lot of people probably never heard this song. It's a song called "Turn Around" by the artist Donnie. It's not Donnie McClurkin. <laughs> <laughs> it's not him it's just an artist an r&b artist called donnie he has a song called turn around really really dope record all right last one the one sports team that has your heart and then if you're not a sports person the one movie you can recite line for line <laughs> the san francisco 49ers oh usually you <laughs> yeah we took the l last week or two weeks ago um but yeah i've been 49er fan since fourth grade and a lot of people ask me, how do you become a 49er fan, right? You know, so, um, you know, being in South Carolina, we don't have professional teams. We got the Panthers in the late 90s or whatever, but all of my professional teams that I like are spread out all over the country. But, yeah, I'm a 49ers fan, die hard. Okay, okay, I respect that, I respect it. All right, now we go back to the classroom. So can you share why you became a teacher? Yeah, so um, my, my family is full of teachers. Um, but I remember in high school, Um, always looking up to my oldest brother, uh, Carlton, and he was um, a computer science major. And I figured I would just do what he was doing because I just wanted to be like him in everything that I did. And, but in the back of my mind, I knew that I loved working with kids. Like it always brought me joy. And so that solidified for my senior in high school, uh, coach Michael Haynes, my ag teacher, he made me project lead for a program called Project for Pals, and I mentored a third grade student by the name of Sterling. And at the completion of that, uh, my senior year after mentoring Sterling for a year, it was solidified that I wanted to be a teacher. So that's really the moment that really uh, made me dedicate my life to to education. 
uh, even though I knew I should have been a teacher or even thinking about it before then. But yeah, that that experience with Sterling and Project for Pals my senior year in high school, definitely. That's cool. That's cool. So we'll push you to pro pursue national board certification. So it, it's it's interesting, Eddie. I think a lot of national board teachers might have a similar story. You know, um, now with social media being prevalent, uh, maybe not so much. But at the time, I knew nothing about national board. Uh, I had a colleague, a fellow teacher of mine, uh, Miss Mary Robinson, who came to me one day and she said, Craig, you need to be a national board certified teacher. You need to pursue this. And being a young teacher, I was a sponge. Uh, I was a sponge. And I said, OK, I'll do it. Still not knowing anything <laughs> about it. I said, yeah, I'll do it. And so that that's what um, that's what guided me to pursue national board certification. And I still say this to this day, uh, the best piece of uh, not even piece, the best professional development that I've ever taken part of, without a doubt. So what was your journey like? Did you achieve on your first try? So interesting, Eddie. I don't know um, if you have heard the um, ancient tales of the take one process, have you? No, I haven't. OK, all right. So um, early on, there was a, a part of National Board where called take one, where you could take one of the four components and work on that for a year. And so I went through the take one process and at the time, if you scored a certain mark, you could bank that score towards the rest of the portfolio entry. And so I went through that process. So I, I made a score that was bankable. So I banked that score. And then the next year, I went and completed the other three components along with the testing center. And so in essence, I got it on my first try. It just took me two years to get, if that hey, makes sense. Hey, sometimes it's better to take your time and get it right than yeah. rush and get it wrong. Yeah. So I, and I did it early. I did it when I was eligible. I had just completed three years of teaching. I did the take one process and uh, the the support was great. I remember um, take one was really big in that at that time. My district was going through it with a lot of other districts. National board sent like this big camera crew down to my school <laughs> and interviewed me and some other people uh, that were taking part in the take one process in my district. It was, it was a really cool um, experience. So what was the most helpful coaching conversation or resource or advice you received while you was going through it? Yeah, I'll go back to Mary Robinson, who was a national board teacher. And, and she always shared with me, Craig, be yourself. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest parts of the process was the reflective part. And you want to be able to look at what you're currently doing and being able to reflect on that and seeing what you can do better. And so I went into the process, not looking to create the perfect lesson, and another thing that put me at ease too um, is when she shared with me, these are other teachers that are going to be looking at your portfolio. And I think that's a unique part of the national board process um, where you understand that there are other teachers viewing your portfolio entry. And so um, the things that happen in the videos and the writing, they, they can relate to um, and they know uh, what to look for and they know how to judge it fairly. So yeah, that was the best advice I think I received. So how did achieving push you in your career, push you on in your career? How much time do you have? <laughs> we can go all day. <laughs> it, so much. So um, again, I, I think about the opportunities that National Board provided me um, with take one being so early and then the uh, limited number of minorities that had achieved certification at that time. And even if we look at uh, just minorities in the education field, period, especially men. So there was a or there was a, a section of National Board that they created called the Dream Team, and it stood for direct recruiting if, efforts to attract minorities. And so with the Dream Team, I was able to connect with so many different other minorities um, from across the country. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking about Penny Piper out in Texas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Penny, but she's amazing. I connected with her. Um, over a decade ago, and we're still friends to this day, and some other minorities across the country, Hubert Willoughby, who I work with in, in some other projects that I'll share in a second. But so the Dream Team was great. It, it exposed me to different things. I remember going to the conference, the National Conference in D.C., um, and there is, there may or may not be a video on YouTube with me being interviewed with no hair, talking no about hair. the Dream Team in D.C., I'm just saying, if anybody wants to search for that video, it may or may not be on YouTube. It hadn't been taken down yet. 
So that's the first thing. The second thing, uh, Thurgood Marshall College Fund, I was able to be a consultant with the Thurgood Marshall, Marshall College Fund because for a period of time, they were connecting their retention program with the National Board process. And so myself, Dr. Will Parker, who is my mentor, Hubert Willoughby, who's a um, educator in the DMV area, National Board teacher, and Ronald Jules, who's a music educator down in Florida, for about three or four summers at different HBCUs across the country, we would work with the TQRP program with Thurgood Marshall College Fund, preparing these young teachers to go through the national board process, providing intense professional development. Um, and that's all because of the opportunities national board provided me. Um, and so, and the last thing I'll share, because I know we don't have all day, even though you said we do, I know, I understand. The last thing I'll share with you, the component of filming myself revolutionized how I taught my students. So I always use drama and um, role playing in my in my instructional work and my strategies with my students. My mom was a high school drama teacher. I tell people all the time, I think when I was born, I had a manuscript in my hand. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I did because um, she always had us in church plays, um, community plays, dinner theaters, all these things. And so I, it was natural for me to incorporate that into the classroom. And so when I did national board, recording myself and actually looking at myself in the classroom did something for me as a teacher. It gave me immediate feedback on things that I thought I was doing, but maybe not really that well. Um, and then things that I was doing really well. And so in conjunction with, uh, I remember my student teacher at the time, Mr. Andre Moss, we decided how about if we use that same model to have our students role play the standards, but we record them doing it. So they get that real feedback in showing them that, they, um, that they're learning a standard that I'm trying to teach them. And it was transformational. We even came up with a name for it, Eddie. It was called Filming Friday. So every Friday we would do Filming Friday where the kids would role play and um, the standards that I taught them for the week. And it was totally transformational. So I give a lot of credit to National Board Certification for the work that I'm doing now um, and the teacher that I became. No, that's really cool. Like one thing I hear speaking to teachers is this is a process of not just for you, but your students as well. Like it's also incorporating them makes it easier on yourself to to get it done. And that's really cool how it became a thing for y'all. Yeah. Like every Friday, filming Friday. It's pretty dope. Yeah. yeah. So why do you believe in the mission of the National Board? So when I look at the mission of National Board and to advance um, the teaching profession and teaching and learning specifically, it is crucial that teachers that want that extra push, that extra level of um, affirmation and validation of the work that they're doing, that there's a process in place for that. And National Board provides that opportunity. And so whenever we can have our students in front of someone that has gone through a process like National Board, our educational system is better because of it. And so because I believe in that, I think here in South Carolina, we are total believers in the National Board certification process, even to the fact of not just our South Carolina National Board Network, which I'm a part of, but also within our school districts. You see many school districts that offer tons of support for their National Board teachers and recognition and additional district supplements um, as it relates to National Board certification because they understand that process is not a box you check. It is a process. It is, is it a, it's a reflective process. It's an investigative process for that teacher to go and be and dive deep into what they do every day as a, a teacher and as a learner. And so um, the mission of the National Board process is near and dear to my heart because I want to make sure that uh, our students get the best of the best. And I know National Board provides our students with that. So you just touched on it. South Carolina recently reinstated the National Board stipend across the state. Can you talk about the impact that we're gonna have that's gonna have on students and teachers across the state? Oh, it's it's transformational. Um, if, if you look at um, our state uh, data, you'll be able to see that um, our national board teachers um, have a higher retention rate in our classrooms. They decide to stay. They want to stay, and national board the support, the supplement at the state level is a big part of that. 
But the most important thing about national board certification and any national board teacher will tell you this, the impact on student achievement is monumental. Um, the success that our students have because they are in the classroom with a national board teacher is so crucial. So now to have that state support uh, of it, we are so appreciative. And so we, we understand that um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, it's really important that we do our best to catch our students up on anything that they may have lost. And we know that national board teachers can assist with um, bridging that gap that, that may have occurred. And if you're south, in South Carolina, we have, there's webinars through the Sarah Center. If you want some information on it, be sure to check those out. We'll link to those in the show notes of this. Yeah, for sure. So Sarah.org, make sure you connect with them. And the cool thing about South Carolina and the support system, so you have Sarah.org. Um, but and that's C-E-R-R-A. Yes, Sarah, like <laughs> yeah, S-A-R-A-H or A is C-E-R-R-A, the Center for Educator Recruitment, Retention, and Advancement in South Carolina. And so with those partnerships, you have the South Carolina National Board Network, which we have members um, that are, uh, that we provide some support as well with Sarah in conjunction with Sarah. So the South Carolina National Board Network currently is still free for any national board teachers to join. So um, you can email us at South Carolina SC National Board Network at gmail.com and we can uh, provide that information for you. Okay, okay. So you are in the 2% of black male educators. Why is it essential for more black men to consider becoming educators? So you probably can't, I'm gonna stand up, well not stand up. <laughs> Let you see my shirt real quick but so i'm site coordinator for call me mr program which is a program when it started in 2000 its intention was to recruit more black and brown men into our elementary elementary classrooms and that since expanded to k-12 um but being in that two percent you know it's it's not a badge of honor it, it really isn't because um Yes, I'm happy I'm in the number, right? I, I'm glad that I'm impacting change um, in education, but that number obviously should be a lot higher because our educational system, the beauty of our educational system, only um, it can be more successful when all students, not just black students, but black, white, Hispanic, Latino, whatever, receive an equitable amount of instruction from a diverse population of teachers. And so to increase on um, black male teachers in the classroom is only to the benefit of our educational system. So um, yes, that 2% uh, is it, totally essential for uh, more young men to uh, be in the classroom. And, you know, when we have state level support for national board in the form of a state supplement, that helps dispel, dispel the, the myth that um, you can't have a um, a long life teaching or long career in education and be compensated for it. So uh, we are always pushing for that support on the state level. Yeah, we got to give some prestige to being an educator. Like there's there's real pride in being a teacher. Like absolutely, I'm not just an educator. I am an educator. I'm a professional, right? And yes. I should be treated as such. Absolutely. Exactly. All right. So if you had to sell the teaching profession to someone looking to get into it in one to two minutes, what would you use as your elevator pitch? I would start with this, capture, inspire, then teach. Four words that I learned from Dr. Steven Peters who um, became my mentor even though he didn't realize it. And it coincided with everything that I believed in life, capturing people when I meet them, inspiring them with a story, and then teaching them something they didn't know. And as a teacher, you get to do that every single day. So come join me. That's my pitch. <laughs> okay, okay. What do you think? You want to be man, a teacher? You get more convincing each time. I'm like, I, I keep thinking, I'm like, man, I might become a teacher soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's my elevator pitch. And it wasn't even a minute long. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So who's your favorite fictional uh, teacher, TV or movie? Oh, man, this is so hard. Like, there's still no judgment zone, right? No, nah, no judgment. So I'm going to go with Mr. Clark from Lean On Me. Okay. Like, so, you know, a lot of people look at his approach and, you know, whatever. But, like, 
if you look at the intentionality of everything that he did is because he wanted the best for those students. Mm -hmm. He truly loved those students. And so, yeah, I would say Mr. Clark. Yeah, he took um, the approach he needed to at, in the situation. It was right. certain to that situation. Yeah, for sure. And it's a, it's, it's a culture classic movie, too. I mean, that's just a classic movie. Very true. So what are three restaurants that folks should try when visiting uh, South Carolina? Yeah, I'm I'm all about promoting the home the home state and especially people I know. Leader Streets, I already talked about that in my opening, <laughs> right? Leader Streets, if you you need dessert wherever you go to eat, go eat. So if you come to Columbia, she has a location um, in uh, Northeast Columbia and then Northwest Columbia. So Leader Streets for the cupcakes. My cousin Jeffrey has three restaurants. It's called Jeffrey Lampskin Jeffrey Lampskin's Country Boy Kitchen. Kitchen. He has two restaurants in Sumter and one in Bennettsville, in Bishopville, I'm sorry. And then Kiki's Chicken and Waffles. You can't go wrong with Chicken and Waffles. She has two locations here in Columbia. So those are three restaurants I would say definitely check out. Okay, okay. So we have a feature on the podcast called The Shoulder Tap. Just like you, we're shoulder tapped. We're going to have you shoulder tap someone else here on this on the podcast. You'll give them a, but on here, you'll give them a quick shout out and we will encourage them to go through the process through promotional tweets and stuff like that. So, Craig, who are you shoulder tapping? I am going to shoulder tap Mr. Xavier Spann. He's a special ed teacher in Richland School District 2 at Muller Road Middle School. Uh, phenomenal educator, graduate of Coastal Carolina University. I uh, was a mister there with the Carbon Mister program. He's on my um, advisory council for my Columbia College cohort a good friend of mine, and I think he would be phenomenal. Okay, right. Xavier, it's you up. <laughs> That's right. You're up, Xavier. All right, so where can everyone find you on social media? Yeah, so on Instagram and Twitter is CQ King. Um, Facebook is Craig Q King. Uh, you know, my website is uh, CraigKingGroup.com, and so would love to connect with you um, in any way I can. All right. Thanks, Craig. I appreciate you taking the time. All right, Eddie, appreciate it. Thanks. That was fun to catch up with Craig. We'll link to some of the stuff he talked about in the show notes. I want to thank him again for taking the time to chat with me on the podcast and thank you for listening to National Board Conversations. Be sure to subscribe wherever you find your podcast and follow the National Board on social media to stay connected to all news National Board related. And we'll see you next time.